It's all it's right, all right to, be to be just a little bit crazy. Being, being creative, creative is being a little bit crazy in just, just the right vibration. vibration. With, that With that in mind, you should understand, should understand God's, God's completely insane. insane. <laughs>
And we do it to our computer desktops. Our computer desktops slow and crash because we're trying to jam too much in at once and the thing can't handle it. And it's like ah, and it stresses itself out in operating system panic. Our subconscious mind is like a hard drive. Our DNA itself is kind of like our CPU slash Wi-Fi connection. Are we sending and receiving and processing? And if you didn't know that already, yes, that is a scientific fact. So we definitely live in interesting times. And just to answer one obvious question on everyone's minds, no, I'm not. Senselessly rambling in unrelated directions. Everything I'm saying is a piece and a building block to my overall point. I'm just kind of taking a slow walk through the forest sort of route of getting to it. So that um, your minds can adapt easily and I'm not giving anyone a migraine headache. I have no desire to give most people a migraine headache. There are a few people who, of course, I would love to give a migraine head to, but chances are you're probably not one of them. So anyway, with computers or anything else, there are certain physics to how things work. If you look at the deeper construct of reality, it's energy physics. Most people don't know that it might be a good idea to learn that. Most schools don't teach that in most places that you'll ever deal with, and most people that you'll ever deal with probably won't admit that or even know that themselves. But most people do have the, the idea wrapped in their minds that there are physics that things operate under that does exist, and that the more we know about these physics, the better shape we're in for navigating our reality. And the less we know, <laughs> we get into lots of trouble. Take it also from the uh, point of view of the kindergarten. Kindergartner has a well, a kindergarten level view of reality. Now that's not bad or wrong. It doesn't make them unintelligent. Doesn't mean that they're weak or horrible or insignificant or anything bad or derogatory or what have you. But they are at the level that they're at. They're at that kindergarten level. And so their access to the rest of reality around them is as restricted as possible by grown-ups. Oh, my phone is ringing. Ah. Area code 866, name unavailable. Probably a telemarketer. It's a toll-free number, so fuck them. <laughs> but anyway, I'll let this uh, finish reading here. I don't know how clearly it's going into the recording or not. Okay, so, moving right along. So anyway, these so-called adults keep the kindergartners away from any of the more expanded aspects of reality that they're not ready for yet, so that they stay out of trouble. And they do so as best they can. Because that kindergartner might not yet realize that fire burns, and the consequences of that. Doesn't mean fire's bad, doesn't mean fire's evil, doesn't mean destruct destruction is the only use that fire has. Fire is a tool. But when utilized in an uninformed, non thinking way, fire can be extremely dangerous. So we keep little kids away from it. They might not know certain things like. If the temperature is too cold and your body isn't acclimated to dealing with that temperature, that it might be a good idea to, at the very least, minimally, wear a light jacket 
And of course, the more severe the temperature is, the thicker the jacket you might want to wear. You wouldn't want to go out in the middle of a, a blizzard in 10 degrees and, you know, in just a light jacket. That, that too, would be very dangerous. So, there's levels of discernment that a little kid needs to use before you're going to trust them to choose their own jacket or even to trust their discernment that they, they are able to realize that a jacket is needed at all or not. They don't fully understand why and there are certain times when they can go out and play. Certain times when it's just not time for that right now. It's time for other things. It's time to take a bath. It's time to eat. It's, you know, time to do other things. To have other experiences. And to expand into other areas of reality. And sometimes when the little kid really, 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 really just wants to keep doing what they're doing. Or they want to go do something they haven't done yet. And you tell them, now is, is not the time for that. Later is the time for that. And you're not telling them no. In fact, you're telling them yes. You're saying, yeah, well, we will do that. We're going to do that. It's on the to-do list. Don't worry. You're not being denied or declined. It's just not something that is able to be done right this very freaking second. Right now. Because there are certain things that need to come first. And as a grown-up, you understand this, and you see the logic in this. But the little kid, as of yet, does not. And so because little kids learn how to deal with their environment through adaptation, because that's what the brain does, it observes its environment, and it looks around at the situations around it to try to pull in information about how to handle situations. So it looks at the, this little child's mind looks around and goes, hmm, how do other people handle situations, these other grown-ups, other kids, other grown-ups, other, you know, all these different types of people? How do they handle similar situations when they're told, you know, you can have this, but not quite yet. There are some things that have to be done first. Well, living in the society that we live in with how parents treat their kids, how parents treat each other, how kids are encouraged and taught to treat each other, and the examples that, you know, you can find on TV, on the radio, in the mainstream, educational system, governmental systems, corporate systems, the examples that are taught to these small children are be afraid as hell, angry as hell, scream and cry and piss and moan and kick and fight and flail around like a junk, a drunken freaking coke addict in a hurricane rage and push and push and scream and yell and hit and kick and demand and demand some more and get louder and listen to nothing listen to no one look at nothing look at no one to scream and yell and tantrum and bitch and fit and piss and moan and fight and hurt and destroy until your adversary breaks down and says okay fine you can have what you want and so that's what the little kid does not simply because, oh, well, that's just what little kids do. No, that's not what little kids do. That's what grown-ups do. They mock each other. They scream at each other. They call each other names. They put each other down. They trip each other up. They hurt each other. They kill each other. They go to war. <laughs> it's what we teach little kids. They observe all this stuff. They go, okay, that's how reality is. I need to survive in this reality, so I must have down to all of the ways, all of the methods, all of the belief systems, all of the constructs. Otherwise, bad things might happen to me if I don't adapt. 
So when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So the small child does not understand that there is other knowledge that they need to have, aspects of physics that they need to understand, in order to be able to see why being told, no, not right now, a little later, you're not being declined, but a little later, for them to be able to look at that and go, oh, okay, I understand that. And we definitely do not teach them the patience of being able to stop and, and really ask questions in such a way that is a curious passion for knowledge and experience. They have that curious passion when they're not mad as hell. But when they're mad as hell, they don't act like a child, they act like a grown-up. <laughs> That's how the grown-ups have taught them, so... When we see an adult acting stupid, you go, oh, you're acting like such a child. Acting like such a toddler. It's actually quite incorrect. They are acting like such a grown-up, like such an adult. The toddlers are simply emulating, they're copying, they're mimicking. Monkey see, monkey do. The toddlers are mimicking the grown-ups. So people do have that backwards. Grown-ups don't act like toddlers. Toddlers act like grown-ups. That insecure, irrational behavior we refer to as toddler is adult ego. That corrupted version of the adult ego that we teach little kids. Yeah, so that's what that is. But needless to say, there are certain requirements for knowledge. In order to be able to move in certain directions and do certain things in a way that you're not getting yourself in trouble or hurt. So people watch all this new agey nonsense. And not to say that anything that the new age movement is saying is actually technically wrong, because technically it's correct. But it's a kindergarten view of the world. And the dangerous thing about that view is that they present it as an absolute view, just as any religion would do. And they say it's the only thing you'll ever need and the only thing you'll ever need to know. <laughs> just like religion does. Just like science does. Just like every administration and label in this world does, whether you're talking about a school classroom, or a fad, or a trend, or a clique of friends. Oh, you're not into that, man. You're a loser. <laughs> you know, this has got to be this way, man. Only this way, or you're a fucking loser, man. Science, religion, social cliques, fads, trends. It's all the same. Little boxes and jammer tells and you got to stay here, man. Otherwise, you're a fucking loser, man. Yeah. So anyway, they look at all this new agey shit, and even though it's not wrong, it's a kindergarten viewpoint. That's why it gets people into trouble. Because they try to use kindergarten viewpoints in the grown-up world. And just like a kindergartner, in the same way, they get themselves into trouble. It's not that the knowledge is bad or dangerous, it's not that the physics are bad or dangerous, not at all. Perfectly safe. It's that the knowledge is incomplete. So it's not bad or dangerous knowledge. It's really the attitude of, well, I've got this, so now that's all I need to know. I can go out and what I think about, think about, will bring about, and energy flows where attention goes, and what you put out is what you get back, and thought creates reality, and da 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 None of these things are wrong, but they're incomplete. <laughs> and it's surface layer knowledge. It's, it's the, 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 the outer skin of the cover of the book, so to speak. So people come to me with all this stuff and they're like, is it true? Can I just wish this and think that and move this in the direction of that and have it just happen? Well, yes and no. Can you light a match and <laughs> suddenly have a fire there as a result of lighting the match? Well, of course, it's possible. 
But if you do that with substances that are extremely flammable, like, you know, let's say a flammable liquid, like a liquid accelerant, and you've got that liquid all over, including covering yourself with it, I mean, it's everywhere, and you light that match, everything around you is destroyed, and so are you, in the most unpleasant way possible. And then again, if you try to light that match underwater, nothing's going to happen. So yes, is it possible to light that match and have that fire happen in a safe and controlled way? Of course it is. Duh. People do it all the time. Otherwise, they wouldn't even have electricity. <laughs> but does it mean that every single way you could possibly light that match in any and every given circumstance is going to work like that? And the answer is no. You have to be willing to expand your knowledge of that. And people are taught that to think that they are incapable, they're helpless, they're worthless, they're, they're stupid, they're beyond stupid. Stupid is smart compared to them. They should be fearful and terrified of everything and just do as they're told and don't make any waves and stay in your place. Otherwise, you're going to be yelled at and scolded and you're going to be punished and you're going to be hurt. And you're going to be imprisoned. You're going to be killed. Your family will reject you. Your friends won't like you anymore. Blah, 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 blah. All this pressure, so we think we are capable of nothing, ever, at all, period, finito, end of story. So then when we're told, oh well, no big deal, just expand your knowledge a little bit. It's a bit to learn, but you know, it's rather easy. That comes off like saying, oh well, it's no big deal, just jump off the cliff and learn how to fucking fly on the way down, yeah. All you gotta do is talk to the magic pink elephant as you pass the rainbow, and the wings will just appear. Yeah, sure, fuck you, you know. Right, go smoke another fucking bong, man. <laughs> so that's the way it comes off to people when you're like, well, you know, yes and no, there's a bit more to learn, but hey, you just gotta expand your knowledge a little bit, just, you know, Ease and flow, do it at your own pace, just let yourself learn, have fun with it. It's like, oh yeah, man, all I gotta do is jump off the fucking cliff and some of the magic fucking elephant across the magic little fucking rainbow. The fucking magic wings are just gonna pop right out your fucking back, man. Yeah, fuck you, dude. That's the way it comes off. They're looking at you like, what in the fuck are you on? Worthless me? Me, who is not capable of anything? Do the impossible? Are you insane? got to realize that that's what I'm thinking. When they're really tired of that line of thinking, and they are open to more, but they don't know how to proceed, and you tell them, look, this is where your line of thinking is, and it's perfectly understandable, and I understand why you're in that line of thinking, and why it's why it's so, so hard to shake. I mean, I was there too, and sometimes I still am, and, and I get it. I get it. And they're like, okay, cool, well, how do I shake this line of thinking, then? How do I... How do I move this weight that's been on top of me for so long, and I have no clue how to move this thing? How do I get rid of this so that the expansion process that you're talking about doesn't seem like this ridiculous thing that you're suggesting I do? How do I remove the weight of the ridiculousness so that I can see and understand that it's really not so ridiculous, that it is as simple as you say, so that I'm not distorting what you're saying through all these belief systems about poor little fucking me. How can I actually get at what you're meaning as you're meaning it? How do I take off the blindfolds and remove the filters and get the weight off me so that I can understand what you're saying for what it is and you don't sound to me like you're ridiculous and retarded and fucking high on something? And that process has been the extreme challenge for me to try to come up with a nice easy way to move that out of the way. Because I still have my own belief systems in that sense, which go against the very physics that I know to work and that I have used and I've proven in my own life through work. 
I believe systems would still go against that, which I already know that I know. <laughs> and I know it's possible, and that I know I have used, and I know I have seen it in action, so I know it's real. But I still have belief systems that go against it. Like the belief system that states, well, you know, I don't currently have a way of explaining this to these people in a way that is easy and comprehensible. So, it's going to be this big struggle to obtain that information. It's going to be this burden to figure out how to do it. Because the task at hand is just so fucking hard. Then I, I, I look at my own belief structures on that. I tell myself the same thing I tell others. Well, it's just a simple matter of opening your mind to expanding that learning. And it's, it's ease and flow. It's easy. Just let go and open your mind and expand it. You know, it's a piece of cake. And now I am the, per the other person looking at me and going to myself. You're nuts. You're crazy. You're asking me to jump off the cliff and sprout the wings and who the hell slipped what in my drink here. So now I've just ironically put myself directly into their position. Not a parallel position of relation, not like, oh yeah, I have been through things similar to that before. So I can relate to that basic idea that you're going through. I mean, it's good to be able to do that sort of thing, but this is more literal, like, literally you are putting yourself in the most literal way into literally their position and you, you, you're playing both roles with yourself at the same time instead of you being on one side and them being on the other and you're trying to assist them to maneuver out of their situation. Now you are on both sides. You are you and you are them at the same time because now you've, you've put yourself in, into that mindfuck paradox with yourself. So, I found myself holding both positions. When you find yourself holding both positions, in my experiences, there's basically one of two things you can do. You can freak out and get really mad and really disheartened, or you can laugh your fucking ass off at the hilarity of the ridiculousness of the whole thing. I really advise number two. It's a lot more fun than number one. <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah. So... I ended up in a very ironic position with myself. I had to let go. And you know when you're awake, you can... practice the idea and the intention of letting go. It's all well and good, but you know, it's easiest to let go while you're sleeping. That's why it's good to kind of relax into your final thoughts at the end of your day before you go to bed. Set some intentions. And let that DNA and, and subconscious mind and, you know, the hard drive and the processor and all that do its work without the memory, conscious mind, the RAM, without that needing to micromanage and see every little thing. I mean, your computer does its background processes just fine without you needing to see and understand every little line of code going on. <laughs> Give your biological computer the same courtesy. Know that your internal Wi-Fi can access that internet, so to speak, all on its own. Your internal CPU can do its calculations without watching it like a hawk and taking a whip to it. And know that all the stuff that's on the hard drive of your subconscious mind is fully accessible by these other things. And so you can set these things upon a task that it can carry out on its own. Just like when you click something on your screen within a program, you know that that program is going to operate on its own. 
You don't have to micromanage every little background task. You don't have to be like, oh my god, if I click this, nothing's going to happen. Unless I'm consciously aware of every little line of code of the situation, you can understand and see everything. Otherwise, my god, if I can't do that, I'm going to click that option on that program and nothing's going to fucking happen. Oh, woe is me. Why bother clicking it at all? I already know nothing's going to happen. Ridiculous. So, your biological computer works in the same way. But that's how we, we react to it. So with that ridiculous and very accurate parallel analogy, I've now made the idea of unwinding before bed and pondering certain things and setting certain intentions to be less ridiculous and more reasonable. To be like, all right, well, I'm just going to hold certain things as curiosities. And I'm going to permit the idea that my biological computer can figure certain things out while I'm asleep and my insecure, pissed off little ego is not in the way. Cracking the whip and barking the orders and saying, no, 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 you can't unless this and this, and you gotta do this this way, and that insecure little ego is shut up, it's shut down, it's put to sleep. The rest of your biological computer can proceed more efficiently now. Nothing's in your way. But those aspects still obey the conscious mind. So they go, okay, before my conscious mind went into nappy nap land, what orders did it give me? What do I need to look into? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was pondering these things before it took its nap. Well, now that it's no longer in my way as that slave driver fucking tyrannical Nazi, now I can feel free to process at my full potential. I can open up the floodgates on my CPU and my bandwidth and all the hardware and software to my availability, and I can just be efficient. So now the rest of your biological computer, well, the conscious aspect of you that you need to be you, is asleep. The rest of yourself gets to have some fun that it doesn't normally get to have. <laughs> Because now you've opened yourself up to it. Because before, even when you'd go to sleep, you'd go to sleep giving it orders of do nothing. Figure nothing out. Because if you do, then you're a naughty naughty and you're going to be in trouble when I wake up, alright? Then you better not. So the rest of your biological computer is like, well, I better sit here in my corner. Otherwise, that big, nasty, conscious mind is going to come after me with help and going to whip me like a bitch. Uh, I don't want to go there. Now you're telling it it has permission to go there, so it's like a kid in cancer. Like, woohoo! Well, the adults are away, the kids will play. <laughs> yeah. So now you're practicing to give it that permission. And that's one of those things that I practice all the time. So when it comes to things like, well, you know, how in the hell am I going to figure out how to explain to these people who ask me, well, how do those physics work then? You know, how is it, well, kind of yes, kind of no, there's some other stuff you need to understand, and yes, you are capable of understanding it, it's just a process of, you know, letting go and allowing yourself to do it. How can I explain that to them without sounding completely, absolutely insane, like I've been hitting the fucking bong, okay? So I've been able to kind of let go of that and put that question as a curiosity rather than a fear, rather than a belief system that, okay, my reality is restricted, is limited by this. I'm not seeing it in terms of, well, I'm asking myself the question, but I've already decided, no, it's not possible, so I may as well just give up. I'm just putting, floating it out there as a curiosity, going, hmm, you know, I wonder how I could do that. Hmm, I'll figure that out eventually, I guess, moving on. So then that's an attitude of can-do, and understanding that just because I can't do it right now doesn't mean I won't ever do it. So it's that comprehension that the kindergartner is taught to not have, because it's been taught to cry and piss and moan and bitch and have a kid. So then your 
deprogramming and reprogramming the emotional and psychological abuse that was put into you by society when you were little and as you were growing up. And you're freeing your mind. Starting to hack your reality a little bit. Starting the process of moving in that direction. So then I woke up this morning, like, wow, look at that. I have this, these concepts, these explanations forming in my mind all by themselves that might just evolve into an answer to that question. Holy shit, I'm doing it. So now, after this big, huge, long, but necessary and relaxing journey through the forest sort of introduction, I will now expand into what I woke up with. Literally woke up. Out of sleep. Going, oh wow, cool with that. Think of your emotions as being equivalent to computer software, the graphical user interface, and your thoughts are like the source code, and just imagine for a moment that unlike in the computer world, we're all programmers, so we can all use the code for the problem, whereas with computers, we're not all programmers, and we don't all get to use that code, some of it's a real mind bug, but Ignore that aspect for right now, and just imagine that, you know, you can use that code. So it's all good. So your emotions are the software, your emotions are Windows, are Linux, are Mac OS, are Internet Explorer, are Firefox, are Facebook, are Twitter, are the web, are, are you know, all of these... <laughs> different interfaces that, you know, that we have. These are the graphical user interfaces of, of your emotion that allow you to navigate the reality of the virtual computer world. And your thoughts are the source code. And depending on how this source code is put together, programs may or may not be more or less efficient than others. You know, which is fine. This is understandable. And so when people ask the question, you know, about, oh, does thought create reality? And, you know, all this other new agey kindergarten and all this stuff. And you're kind of like, well, kind of yes, kind of no. There are some things you've got to learn. It's not just as simple as that. It's because that on the kindergarten level, when you put your thoughts and intentions and feelings and whatever towards, okay, well, I want to change my reality to this. And you go, tra la 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 la, and you're in your little meditation and happy little fairy Peter Pan land going, ooh, I'm going to do this and shift it to this. And you look around and you go, it's not happening. Why isn't it happening? Or worse, you look around and, oh my god, I just manifested the opposite. My god, I just pissed into the fan. What did I do wrong? Yeah. The reason that that's happening is because they're trying to change the graphical interface by moving the source code around but they're not taking one very important thing into consideration. With a physical computer, that source code that makes up the software is installed. What is it installed to? Well, it's installed to the computer hardware, of course. So what these kindergarten level new aging type of perspectives that are limiting are teaching people 
is that upgrading the hardware, or excuse me, upgrading the software and the source code will magically upgrade the hardware. And as you know, that's kind of ridiculous. Can you install a program that's going to give you a processor upgrade? Or that's going to physically take out your 100 gig drive and magically replace it with a 1 terabyte drive? Is there a software you can install that will magically make your 4 gigs of RAM disappear and magically make 16 gigs appear in its place? Is there a software you can install that will magically transform the motherboard of your computer into that upgraded foundation upon which the hard drive and, and memory and CPU and all these other upgrades are capable of actually interfacing with? Can you install a piece of software that will physically, magically transmute your hardware so that you don't have to shop at any electronics store or what have you to actually get these replacements. Is there a piece of software that can just wave Tinkerbell's fucking wand, shake J Jiminy Cricket's little umbrella, and go, Open Sesame! Wooga Wooga! And presto changeo that computer is magically something else. If you saw a piece of software on the internet that claimed to be able to do that, but the only thing you would do in the face of that is probably laugh your ass off. Because you would know that a piece of software cannot magically, like some sort of sci-fi B-movie, just magically change your computer into, into something else physically. You can't download something off the internet that's going to do that for you. It's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. Absolutely. Completely correct that that is ridiculous. So software is made up of source code. And that software is installed to the hardware. What are your thoughts and emotions installed to? Well, my physical body, uh, yes and no. Remember, there's different parts of, of a computer. Saying, well, my physical body would be like saying, well, all my software and stuff is um, installed in my sound card, yeah! No. There's other components that you know there isn't. My sound card. It's all my sound card. Shut up. <laughs> no. Your physical body is just one component. Just like your thoughts are one component. Your emotions are one component. There is an energetic component. <laughs> Atoms are made of energy, remember? Oops goes back to my mention of energy physics earlier. Who are you? If we had to give this energetic component a name, New Age and metaphysical circles sometimes call this the energetic body. They speak in terms of the energetic body, the physical body, the emotional body, and the mental body. Well, let's look at that from a, a different approach that's not going to confuse you. What are these thoughts and emotions installed to? The software. What is it installed to? Yes, your physical body has a lot to do with it. But, because everything is made of energy, your physical body too is just a program. Your entire physical reality is just a program. Your physical body can be seen less like physical hardware and more like the operating system. Whereas your your computer software is installed to Windows or to Linux or to Mac OS or whatever. Um, your thoughts and emotions are installed to your body, which is your operating system. But it's not the computer. Not in this particular context. The computer is the energetics that everything is installed into, that all of reality is installed into the universe, the multiverse whatever you want to think of. And that is built out of core belief systems. 
Core belief systems are just frequencies of energy. And exactly like electricity, when certain frequencies interact with each other, some things are more possible, other things are less possible. Some things work in harmony, and other things are very explosive and destructive and do not work and are highly not recommended. Such as the more low voltage interface of your body, trying to interface with a high voltage fence or the, the third rail of, um, you know, a commuter train or what have you, you know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, or trying to stick your, your fingers into raw electrical wire in your electric box or things like that. Not compatible. Two such totally different frequencies of, it, of energy that they are extremely destructive. You're going to blow out your breaker box and kill yourself in the process. It's, it's not cool, man. Two completely not compatible frequencies of energy. Don't put them together. The belief systems that the entire reality of everything is installed into being one yet separate, we have, shall we say, our own little space for our own core beliefs that our own software is installed into. and. You know, we kind of call this individuality. I don't look into the mirror and see your face looking back. Oh, do I? Of course not. I look into the quantum mirror and I see your face looking back. And we call that interaction between people. You know, when you're sitting in a room with your friends in front of the quantum mirror. And they are going to reflect aspects of you back to you. Because there are reasons that you're attracting them into your reality and vice versa. The positive aspects are going to be attracted to the positive and the negative to the negative, and both are going to push and pull each other. That's why your best friend will always have aspects of their personality that annoy the shit out of you and you want to kill them for it. And your worst enemies will still have personality traits that you like. And it sickens you to think that you can like anything better than it's just, you know, it's, that's the energetics at work. <laughs> Frequencies aligning. So your core belief systems are, are more equivalent to that computer hardware. So, of course, if you change what you think and you change how you feel, it does not mean you change your belief systems. You can have thoughts, feelings, and opinions that totally contradict your belief systems. There's a part of your brain that lets you do this. It's called the frontal lobe. It's what separates you from, say, you know, your kitty cat or your dog or what have you. Animals are completely programmed by their environment totally and cannot defy it or go against it or be different than it because their frontal lobe won't let them. And the only time they expand beyond it is by watching, well, you know, humans expand and whatever they're able to mimic and duplicate, monkey see, monkey do, to whatever level, then they do. And that does enhance and evolve them a bit, and we're kind of doing a service to them in that way. Well, sometimes, sometimes we're, <laughs> we're teaching them bad habits. <laughs> but, you know, like when we get, like, you know, like pit bulls that fight each other, Rottweilers and shit like that, I just think cool. Um, but anyway... So yeah, of their own accords, animals cannot look at their environment and engage their frontal lobe and go, well, I see all this feedback coming to me, but you know, I'm going to decide to have a different opinion. I'm going to decide to think and feel differently than what I'm seeing around me. Animal can't do that. Human can. Human definitely can. So it's that frontal lobe that allows you to think and feel differently than your core belief systems. And so, your thoughts and your feelings can reprogram your core belief systems over the longer stretch of time. And that's one of the functions of deconstruction and construction of neural networks in your brain. But all this airy-fairy bullshit, new age garbage, limited kindergarten perspectives, want you to think that that's not your power within you. That your biology has nothing to do with it. That your frontal lobe and your neural networks have nothing to do with it. That if you simply change how you think and feel, the Tinkerbell is going to come with her magic wand and go, bling, bling, doo, doo, doo. 
Oh, look, we're changing the fucking reality. Oh, here you are. Thank you, Drive No. And so our belief systems are still opposite what we're thinking and feeling. So the belief systems are what determine the physical reality. So our belief system still says, well, life's a bitch and everything sucks and people are assholes and fuck you and kiss my ass. Well, your thoughts and feelings are like, well, you know, I don't like that reality. So, you know, I'm just going to pretend that it's different. I'm going to pretend that everyone is lovey dovey and everything is love and light. And I can wave my magic wand and pull off butter la. Oh, look at how good and lovely and beautiful and pretty everything is. <laughs> and, you know, that's like trying to touch fire and going, well, because I love fire and fire's so wonderful and lovey, 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 I'm going to touch it and pet it and it's not going to burn me. And then they touch it and go, wow, fuck, I guess I wasn't loving it enough. I need to love it more. Oh, give me your fire, I love you. Oh, ah, fuck, it burned again. I need to really love this fire more, man. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna love the shit out of you, motherfucker. Love it. Ah, burn me again, bitch. That's because the core belief system is still, you know. So it's kind of like that. We get burned by our own core belief systems when we run into all this airy fairy shit and thinking that because, just because we change what we think and feel, that the entire reality has changed. Now, only part of the reality has changed because, yes, granted, it's a graphical user interface. So yeah, you shift your thoughts and your emotions, and by God, you know, you might align with those circumstances to get that new car and, and whatever. But there's just one problem. Your core belief systems are still as they were. They're out of alignment with that, so because you have core belief systems that say, oh, everything's got to be a problem, then that new car is going to cause you nothing but problems. Because the external can only reflect the internal core beliefs. So when we have this materialistic idea that, oh, money can bring us happiness, success can bring us happiness, when it really works the other way around, it's like believing and seeing, not the other way around, then if we believe that, oh, life can only give us hell and misery and shit and nothing else, and that is the reality, I'm putting my foot down and that's it, and that's just the way it is, then we try to trick ourselves into thinking that we don't actually believe that anymore. Then, yeah, we might get that new car, we might get that raise or whatever, like these new agey sons of bitches are talking about with changing your, your thoughts and your feelings and manifesting. That can happen, that does happen. But then that which you manifest, it turns into your enemy. Because your belief system states that, well, everything's against me, without exception, I'm not going to accept any other beliefs, fuck you, the world's my enemy, kiss my ass. Because that was never deprogrammed, and you're just pretending that you don't have that, you're lying to yourself, you're deceiving yourself, you're tricking yourself, like thinking you can just love the fire into not burning you. Well, if I love it enough, it won't burn me. Because I'm loving, lovey, dovey, love. Lovey, lady, lovey, who? <laughs> You're going to burn the shit out of yourself with that. So that, I think, is a good way of how to explain the primary confusion. We think that this software install, upgrade, thoughts and beliefs, excuse me, thoughts and emotions, can change the hardware. Oh, I'm going to install a new hard drive upgrade. I'm going to download this executable file and run it and magically transmit my hard drive. No, 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 no. Now you can install a software such as a web browser that can allow you to surf other applications such as online stores to then maybe locate a really good deal on a new hard drive and then purchase that using monetary exchange softwares, gateways, and platforms like credit card systems and PayPal and whatever else. You can use software in that way to upgrade your hardware. You're using the softwares which allow you to travel a certain path to lead you to what you want and then take something of what you have and exchange it for that other something. And that new hard drive comes in the mail from Amazon.com or 3D Tech or Monoprice or whatever, you know, eBay, whatever. Comes in the mail and you open it up, and cool, you know, you got the hard drive in the 
hook that up, plug it in, and, you know, if it's just extra storage space and it doesn't really require much, it detects and it's there, thank you, drive through, it's all good. You might format it to a different file system if you don't prefer the one that it's already got on it, but, you know, beyond that, easy peasy, piece of cake. Now, if you're upgrading the entire operating system and all that with it, you're replacing your other hard drive, you know, you gotta back up your files, and, you know, you gotta know how to you know, upgrade the operating system and, you know, do all this other slightly more technical stuff, which really that stuff isn't all that hard. It's a bit more of an extended process of learning, but, you know, it, it still requires that. So, when you change your thoughts and your feelings, it can put you into experiences and positions where you can then go through a process of learning how to change your core belief systems and thus changing more of your core reality. But it's still a process of learning. The airy fairy new agey Easter bunny or Tinker Bell or whatever is not going to appear in your room and go, Lovey dovey do, poof! And your reality just changes completely despite the belief system that you're holding. Thank you, drive through. It's not McDonald's. It's not Peter Pan. It's not Tinker Bell. It's not Aladdin's genie. Sorry, it's not. Matter of fact, that's the whole point of the story of the Aladdin genie sort of stories, the consequences of wishing. Because if something is absent in your reality, it's not there, that's why you wish for it. Otherwise, why wish if you already have it? I really wish I was sitting in this chair that I'm sitting in right now. That would be silly. But if you're wishing, then it's backed by a belief system that says, I do not have, and if I do have, then it has to become a problem for me and self-destruct. Otherwise, I wouldn't be wishing. So that's why the genie can only grant the wish. <laughs> the genie can only go according to the core belief system. That it doesn't matter what you get in the external, it's still going to bend you over and fuck you in the ass. Because you have a belief system that says, yep, that's how we gotta do it. This is how we do it. You can also kind of imagine your your computer case as your worldview paradigm, also known as your comfort zone. <laughs> and we all start with these little bitty, tiny, tiny, tiny cases. Little bitty, bitty. And we're told, oh, look how, how small it is. It's easy to carry around. It's efficient. Be in with the in crowd. Buy into the marketing. Be our slave. We say less is more and less is cool. Being tortured is cool. Being beaten is cool. Having all your rights taken away is cool, man. Talk government's cool. Reject new knowledge. Ignorance is cool. Be addicted to your ego. Strive for that sense of illusion of being right. It's cool. Stay in that little box, man. That little box is awesome. It's the end fucking thing. It puts you on top, man. Doesn't really hold much, though. <laughs> And just like the kindergartner doesn't understand, when you want to expand out into other capabilities, there's more you need to know, more you need to have, more you need to do, which is neither good nor bad. Walking through the forest requires actually walking through the forest. That's neither good nor bad, not right nor wrong, it just is. It's all good, it's all cool, but to walk through the forest, you got to walk through the forest. It's just, you know, one of the requirements of, uh, you know, actually walking through the forest. So similarly, if you're going to undertake things that require a bigger computer case, Smaller case is not right or wrong, good or bad. A bigger case is not right or wrong, good or bad. But you are limited by it. Just like all your software on your computer has minimum system requirements. If your computer is below those requirements, you cannot run the software. So, if that software is requiring you to have hardware components that you don't have, and your case is too small to put them in, then you need to upgrade your case. Expand your box. Expand your worldview paradigm. Increase your capability. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to run that software. In some circumstances, you might be able to hack your way around it, which will give you an extreme advantage over everyone in your particular little limited box that's there with you. But it will not expand you out of that box. And there's consequences for those actions. There's cons to those pros. 
you know, it's kind of like uh, duct tape and super glue and, and rubber band sort of uh, fixing things. It may very well work. It might work good. It might work efficiently, but it's still not going to do as good as the full thing would do. It'll give you the biggest, baddest, best edge ever within that limited box that you've been in, but it will not expand you beyond it. It won't. It doesn't have that capability. So you can, you know, you can get away with tricking the software a little bit here and there. You can emulate certain things. You can hack certain things. Um, you know, you can run Windows software on Linux and Linux software on, on Windows and run entire operating systems on completely different other operating systems. You can modify files to make them do things that they wouldn't have otherwise done before and um, all sorts of crazy cool shit you can do and it's crazy and it's cool and it's neat and it's fun and there's nothing wrong with all that but it's still going to be limited by its limitations its minimum system requirements and if you are below those requirements then all you are doing is just using super glue and duct tape and rubber bands <laughs> And eventually that will come apart. When it comes apart, it will be big and loud and, and messy and, and inconvenient and really fucked up. And you'll have to clean up the mess and put it all back together. And when you put it all back together, it'll hold for a time. It'll do exactly what it did before, but it'll still eventually unravel itself. And that's just the nature of it. I'm not saying there's anything right or wrong with that. It's fine. I'm not condoning anyone do or not do anything. There's nothing good, bad, right, or wrong about it. But it doesn't change the fact that it is what it is. And if you want to move beyond that, you have to be willing to expand. Taking shortcuts without expanding is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, it's one of the best ways to show yourself that you can use what you already have to optimum efficiency. Instead of looking at it in terms of, oh man, I don't have this, this or that. I'm stuck with this little bit that I have. I need more and I don't have it and poor little me. That whole idea of hacks and shortcuts can help shift your core belief systems because you can see, oh, I can actually get a lot more of what out of what I have than I thought I could. And once experiencing enough of that makes it more reasonable and doable for you to see that your your core beliefs can expand, then they start expanding automatically. So it's a valid process moving towards that expansion, but it isn't expansion in and of itself. You are still working within your box, but you are showing yourself that Within your box, you can do a lot more than you thought you could. You can get a lot more out of that box than you ever thought you, it was possible. And when you see that you are getting a lot more out of where you already are, it becomes a hell of a lot more rational and reasonable and sensible to you when someone says, you know, look at where you, what all you've done where you already are. You know, you could expand a little bit more out from that and do even more. I'm not saying you've got it totally you know, burst out like a supernova, but you can expand a little bit and get a little bit more capability out of that. And then you're like, yeah, I, you know, I don't have to totally whoosh out all of a sudden. I, I can expand in little bits, little steps, and that, you know, that would really help what I'm already doing. If I expand just a little, little, little bit beyond my box here, I can get a little more out of this than I'm getting. I can get a little more out of that than I'm getting. Man, I'm getting quite a bit already, because before I wasn't getting anywhere near that. Because my core belief system said, woe, little, woe is me, poor little me, I'm so weak and worthless and, and useless, I can't do anything, and fuck my life, and where's the gun, I'm going to get a bullet, put it to my head, and pull the trigger, and I'm not worth anything, and life's a bitch, and it sucks, and what the fuck's the point? Now I don't think like that anymore. Now I get the most out of everything, I've learned how to get the most out of everything. I've learned how to be awesome and efficient, and I can see through the lies of society. I've gotten a lot out of my box. So, expanding a little bit out of my box ain't going to hurt me. It's not going to be overload. It's no big deal. It's just walking a block to the corner store. I'm not walking to the other side of the country. I'm not 
leaving too far outside of my comfort zone. I'm just getting curious. I'm exploring. And once you start to explore a little bit outside, you make a habit of it, your comfort zone, your worldview paradigm expands a little more, your computer case upgrades as you shift your core belief system. And you just continue that process like that. So that's how you allow for more. That's how and why it's an automatic process, but it's an automatic process that you have to trigger. It's not an airy fairy magic frickin' Peter Pan Tinkerbell sort of thing. There's a method to the madness, a madness to the method, there's a physics, there's an energetics, frequency, vibration, you know, there's a science to this. It's not Tinkerbell and it's not Peter Pan and it's not wish upon a fucking star and bend your ass over where you are. You know that it'll make you sick because here it comes Obama's dick. You know, imagine Jiminy Cricket bouncing with his umbrella with this evil smirk going, yeah, take a bitch. Anyway, seriously, getting back to the point though. I mean, you see what I'm saying. So this is the first version of the first expression of expressing what I have learned. And it's a long audio file. <laughs> And as I practice it, I'll become better at it and more efficient at it and get more out of my box. So guess what? This audio file will get shorter as I get better at expressing this. Won't be anywhere near as long. And we've already seen it in my past works. There are things that it used to take me a lot longer to explain than it does now. Efficiency is something that's learned over time. That's not good, that's not bad, that's not right, that's not wrong, but it is just what it is. It is, period. End of story. So I hope this little rant has um, inspired you, gotten you to ponder things about your life and about yourself and about reality and whatever else. Don't believe me, don't disbelieve me. Because when you ponder and explore and you learn through experience, belief is not necessary. If you believe you're a fool, if you disbelieve you're a fool, learn through that expansion, that willingness. Because, yeah, beliefs do make up your reality, but it's you believing in you that's doing it. You believing that you have the right to believe what you believe about reality, not about blind belief in others. You don't need to believe or disbelieve in anything that I or anyone else says. Don't see information as an authority over you. Information is just a tool. Use it as such. You are the master. You are the wielder of the tool. You are not the tool's bitch. You have been programmed to think that you are. You go around saying, oh, well, I am an age, I am a gender, I am a career field, I, I am a political view, I am a spiritual view. But I, no, 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 you're not. These are your property, these are your tools, these are things that you own, but you are not these things. You have an age, you have a gender, you have a sexuality, you have a spiritual view, or lack of a spiritual view, same difference. You have a political stance, or back there on the political stance, again, same difference. You have this, you have that, da da da. These things are your property, you are not this, you are not that. These things have not taken possession over you. These are things that you have possessed. But you are tricked into thinking that they have taken possession over you, and that's half your confusion. Things are your property, not the other way around. So on that note, I wish you all a good day or evening or night or morning or whatever it happens to be, wherever you are. If you really want to be enlightened, just lighten up. Bye-bye.